I think we should go for this one right here. This is Andrew calling in from Canada who says that science proves the Bible and can explain why. Andrew, you're on AXP. How are you doing? Hey, Boris. I'm doing really well. Uh, first off, I want to say I'm a big fan, and I'm taking up a theist mantle on this. I need your help. Okay, so okay. The, uh, the argument for the Bible is actually old science textbooks. Um, old science textbooks have outdated information, and we don't toss out every theory in an old science textbook because some of the information is bad, right? Like, Phrenology, for example, is in old textbooks. If you get a science textbook from the 1800s, it'll have accurate mm. descriptions of like the solar system and Earth. And then you get into like descriptions of Africa and uh, it gets a little dicey, right? Sure. Um, so we, we continue to like look at the theories in those books and we analyze them and we throw away the stuff that doesn't work, but we keep the stuff that does work. Right. Um, yeah. And we analyze each claim on its own. Um, <laughs> the other thing is that like, we're not talking about like a 200 year old textbook. We're talking about a 2000 year old source. Um, mm. It was originally written in, what Hebrew or some other language and translated to Latin and then translated to English. And it's gone through how many people. So there's bound to be like lost context, lost subtext, uh, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so is it like, but the question is, would you still go pick up an old outdated science book today and look to it for any kind of reasonable information? Or would you say, I can't tell what's good or what's bad in this. I should probably go get something more updated. Well, now, if the only thing that you had was that 200-year-old textbook, but you had people that you could go and talk to today to kind of like sort through that, like if, if all of a sudden the only thing that we had was the 200-year-old textbook and what we have from memory and what we have from like current scientific sources, we would be able to rebuild or build a much better book than that one there, right? We would be able to improve that 200-year-old science textbook and kind of rebuild it or shape it for modern times, right? That's never happened. Sure. With the right, because it doesn't need to is a thing. Well, I would argue that it does because, like, it's too old. And if we actually start... So, like, so I got myself into a trap here, man. So I was looking at the creation story. Mm -hmm. If if we look at it with the idea of lost context, lost subtext, and uh, it, it was an attempt to explain the world with the information that they had, right? Agreed. Like, so the idea that the world was made in seven days, well, we know that that's not accurate now. So that's like, what's more likely that that was the absolute or that that was what they were using like a literary device or they were trying to form the concept of like the big bang and oh man i'm like i'm looking at my notes here and i'm like this this is weird so the, the so, question i have is like why is it necessary to try to say that we need to re revamp the bible because I, I agree with you it was our first attempt at a science book it was trying to write down all the oral histories that we had explaining where we came from and why we are who we are and, and why we behave the way that we do. There was a guide to morality. It was a guide to life. It was all of these traditions compiled down into one thing. Sure. What's the value in revamping it? Because if I want to say, well, if we tweak the origin story this way and that way and add this context and add this subtext and put this in the, then you kind of get something that sounds a little bit like the Big Bang and therefore it, that's what's in here. Why would I do that? Why wouldn't I just say, here's, you know, pick, here's the principles of physical cosmology. If I want to learn about a thing there, I can look this up. I don't need to go re, 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 reinterpret the Bible. I can just go pick up one of these and I can make that work. What am I gaining out of the Bible that I wouldn't be able to get out of any other random textbook, you know, from science? Like I have the science textbook. 
Why do I need to make the Bible into a science textbook if I already have the science textbook? What am I getting out of the Bible that I wouldn't be getting otherwise? What's the value that the Bible brings? The pursuit of spiritual knowledge. So we've got like knowledge okay. of the physical world. We've got philosophy and we've got this outdated and like, okay, so philosophy has not caught up with technology, right? Mm. Like there are lots of tech things that there's, there's some massive phil philosophical questions behind the advancements of technology, right? So technology is outpacing philosophy and both of those are outpacing spirituality because the last time that a serious attempt was made to boil it down into something was 2000 years ago and people have closed their minds off to it since then. Okay. So now the follow-up question, why wouldn't we just invest in the pursuit of philosophy? Why wouldn't we just have philosophers do some philosophizing and come up with ideas and we can sit around the table and talk about the, again, what's the benefit that specifically the Bible is bringing that it needs to be updated? Why couldn't we just read the Bible and be like, hey, it says this stuff. I don't really like it. It says this stuff. That was pretty cool. We'll keep this thing, move on, make our own new philosophy well, that fits the world. It's the Bible. Like, it's, it's all religious texts. Like, just, just the same as, like, any, any scientific theory, any philosophy, any spiritual theory. Like, what, what is the value in completely excluding spirituality from the pursuit of, or, for, like, from the... Um, what spirituality? Like we, we agree that scientific pursuit is valuable, right? Sure. And advancing technology, advancing medicine, that is beneficial to mankind. Yeah. Would we also agree that advancing philosophy to be able to tackle those issues, the, the, the technological issues, that's also valuable? Sure. Uh, well, in my argument is that spirituality is another... Another I don't even know what that, pillar. I don't even know what that is. But I don't know. What, we don't yeah, even what, know what what is that. like. If someone's just using a grunt, spirituality. It's just a grunt you make with your mouth. I don't even know if there's a reference to that. So like, what? I don't. I'm not into this like begging the question and assuming that spirituality is a thing for us to like revise and and figure out. If it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. If we're just using a word to refer to nothing, then that's what we're doing. I just that that construct of getting to that. I don't, I don't really. I don't really, maybe I'm not understanding, but I'm, I'm not really in kind of just run. No, look, there's a fill paper survey about what is philosophy. The question is nobody agrees. Nobody agrees. Not even philosophers agree on what it is in that sense. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some would say it's love of wisdom. For me, it's just, I just want to come to truth. And I think that's a tool that can be used with like deductive arguments, or at least it can kind of sit on the outskirts of science and like philosophy of science and stuff like that, but not really, um, it's going to have its place right in the seams of different domains. And if spirituality is just real, then you should have some type of method or mechanism. So here, let me just put it in like the easiest way I can. And I just broke well, the first commandment. No I philosophers can't. agree on what philosophy is, right? So. If well, so, no, written, I'm, I'm not saying, there no, I'm saying definition of what it is. So why there, philosophy over spirituality? I'm saying that. Well, all no, no, listen, listen, be listen, listen. Advance together. That no, no, there's. Disregard. Listen, I'm not. Okay, real quick. I'm not done. What What I'm saying is that like not everybody. There are people that obviously agree um, on what something is in philosophy. What all I'm trying to express is that there is no consensus in philosophy. It just doesn't really exist. We get consensus in something like science. That's not to like bash on philosophy. I love philosophy. I'm wearing a shirt that says philosophy on it. I love philosophy. Me too, dude. It's it's one of my favorite hobbies to read uh, papers and books, and I love it. I, I absolutely love it. The, the problem is, though, is that philosophy is doing something in one case, like science is. We have these ideas in our head, and what we need is a mechanism to go from in our head to actual, they're actual in reality, right? There's a, this, this corresponds to what's actually there. And if you just have spirituality, like, separated or something, I'm, I, I mean, I don't even know what method you're using to get there, but I don't see why anybody should care about, like, saving this concept that we don't even know actually refers to anything in the world has a good definition uh, that people can agree on uh you know if there's a method involved like philosophy has uh like a deductive arguments or something like that then you could provide something like that for spirituality but i don't really understand this whole like build like going back and rebuilding it 
truth has nothing to fear from investigation. So if spirituality is true, whatever that is, presumably you can take that imaginary concept and show that it reflects the reality that me, you, and Forrest all share. And that's the thing that I'm going to care about. All this other stuff, I don't, I don't see the point. It seems to get in, in the way of, here's a method on how I can show my imaginary thing in my head is not just imaginary. Science does that pretty well. Philosophy does that pretty well. I think he, he hang up. No, well, he says he's still there. Andrew, you still there? Oh, yeah, I'm still here. Andrew. I'm still here. Oh, there you are. Oh my God. Uh, did you, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Like, like, if you have this belief, I'm trying to just bring it, and maybe I'm missing what you're saying. I'm just trying to bring it to the core. If you think that there's something like spirituality, great. You should be able to have a method to determine that. If it's science, if it's philosophy, all the doors are open. I've used the example on the show several times that, you know, me and Forrest opt for a hammer, which we'll just call science to build houses. That's great. If you have another method to build houses or to get to truth, then show us. It's just the case that when I look over at people who say this, they have an empty lot. And I look back over at me and Forrest and we've built fucking cities. And then I look back over and they're on top of our cities shouting, oh, there's other ways to do this, right? Whether it be a TikTok or YouTube or they're using platforms like this. And I'm still just looking at their lot going, there's nothing there. You don't even have foundation. You can't even take me to a, a department or like a Home Depot and show me where what aisle to buy the tool is in. And if that's the case, um, I'm just not really interested in that conversation because someone's trying to weasel out of having to do actually a, a rigorous analysis. And I don't like yeah. that. I don't like sidestepping well, there, rigorous analysis that we actually know. There hasn't been rigorous analysis of spirituality in 2000 years. And that's why we have this, all these outdated ideas and these outdated concepts on it. And it's so difficult to explain. And philosophy, it's more up to date, but it's sitting in kind of the same camp where, like you said, there's, there's not really any one consensus and it means different things to different people. And that's the same with spirituality, right? Like, and well, no, 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 so no, no. They're not the same. They're, they're not. They're not the same. There's an asymmetry. There's an asymmetry, and the symmetry. The asymmetry is that in in philosophy, you have something called a priori knowledge, a posteriori knowledge. Science deals with empirical knowledge, a posteriori. Uh, so does philosophy. You know, philosophy of science or other things. It's not exclusive. But there's this notion of a priori arguments or deductive arguments in philosophy. That's any paper, most of the papers you read, it'll spend all this time. And then here's a form like the formalized version of what I've been saying this whole paper so that it it's a valid and sound argument or, you know, maybe it's not sound, but it's a valid structure. And the conclusion follows from the premises that is different than spirituality, because me and force don't know what the hell people are even talking about with that, nor is somebody saying, hey, look at this deductive argument. And even if they did, I have to say, OK, it proves a concept called spirituality, but you haven't even defined that. Like there's just a boatload of problems that I don't even know how you get off the ground. And if you just concede that for 2000 years, we've been wrong, then this proposition isn't justified. It doesn't seem that anybody knows what the hell they're talking about. Hence the failure. I have a totally different thing that I want to bring back to whenever you get done with this as well. Oh, I'm, I'm done. I'm sorry. I just, no, no. Whenever he answers, yeah. I, 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 you said something earlier on that bothers me, but I want to make sure you answer J Mike. Oh, I'm, I'm like, like I said, I'm, I'm taking up the theist mantle on this, but I'm like, I am an atheist and, or I, I think I'm an atheist and I'm, I'm, I want you guys to really pick apart the way that I'm thinking and help me find the problems in it. You know what I mean? Like, right. You need a method. Like, and I'm trying yeah. to see that asymmetry. Um, you have no method, but you have nothing. You have no method that takes something in your head. That's imaginary for this, for this claim, uh, this idea in my head and showing it's reflective of reality. That's as simple as I can put it. If you can do that thing, that's what science does. I hypothesis, hypothesize this thing. If it's not true, we should expect this thing. Oh shit, that thing came true, falsified, right? That's yeah. that's being like epistemically humble and responsible. Okay, but what for, about for my philosophy for that? Position. That's where I'm not seeing, like that's, what I'm, that's where my disconnect is because I know that science stands apart. Like I, I fully believe in the scientific method and you know what I mean? Like I, I'm not going to sit here and be like, science is wrong. Like science is the most advanced, knows the most, right? Philosophy is lagging behind. What I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see we're, the- We're just, the, we're just filling in the, where philosophy was huge. Philosophy, we are filling- What look, look, does we, philosophy we, have for demonstrating the well, real world? Like what other people, religion would need to do? 
Well, I mean, people can use deductive arguments. That's what most people usually try to do, but there's still questions on whether or not that works, right? Whether or not that some, I could give a deductive argument why God doesn't exist and a theist is just going to probably deny one of the premises. What I think philosophy does, the thing that I'm pretty confident on is very similar to Occam's razor. It's this idea that we take um, explanatory virtues, things that we want and explaining the data and vices, things that we don't want. Right. One of the things that we do want is simplicity. We don't want to have just all these entities added to our hypothesis for no reason that serve no explanatory role. So you want a hypothesis that, or a view or a theory, and by theory, I just mean like a metaphysical theory or how you think the world is, not like a real theory. When you have your world, you have a worldview comparison in, in philosophy. I think people like Graham Oppie do this really well, where they compare naturalism to theism or versions of theism. And they'll, hey, we agree on fine tuning for the sake of the argument. Here's why naturalism actually favors that. Oh, we agree that this, this is why naturalism favors that. And the only, the reason why that works in a sense is that we both agree on the principles. If me and my interlocutor say, we want a simpler theory that best explains the data and boom, then we can trade off kind of views on which one's simpler. And I don't think like metaphysics is going to be like, here's how you saw. That's not a thing. I don't think like, we're not touching anywhere near that. Philosophy was a big, wide thing. Then science came along and took a big, giant chunk out of it, right? Art, all these things. And now philosophy is just is the seam that kind of sits in between those domains. It's not like proving things. It's, it's helping and guide in other domains. And that could help in your spirituality domain. We don't even know if there's a there there. That's what I'm arguing that uh, spirituality would do. It's not, it's, it's not a full domain like science. It's more of like a, a side domain or a guide domain. You know what I mean? Like philosophy. I, I don't see any literature written. Like I can go to philpapers.org uh, and I can go look up uh, like Joe Schmidt's papers on like a, aloneness or something. Right? I can look up all these, these things and nothing, there's nothing like some place that you have people submitting papers with arguments. If they did that for the spirituality thing, they're just conducting, they're just making a philosophical argument for spirituality. And that's all I'm asking. You can, you can try to do that, or you can say it's, it works with science. Clearly, if that was a settled debate, we wouldn't, I don't know that we'd have a show and be talking about this stuff. It's clearly the case that um, seems that there's something to fear from investigation because nobody's really coming up with some method um, at which demonstrates the supernatural or the spiritual. And that's, not really my problem that people want to have these beliefs and not be able to demonstrate it. I can just call it out when I see it. I don't think saying, Oh, there's the spiritual thing. So therefore uh, we should, it, this concept, therefore we should like try to work with it. No. I mean, if I had a concept of electrons or something and I falsified that and electrons didn't exist, then we do away with that concept. Like that's done. Finito. Bye-bye. Yeah, but that's, that's not that's the kind case. Of my big thing is like, it's it, this whole thing you were talking about at the very beginning that the, the Bible was like our first attempt at like understanding the universe. And I agree it was, but because it was our first, it was also our worst. And so like, I don't see any benefit from that kind of thinking when that kind of thinking has been shown to be completely, you know, unproductive. It doesn't do anything. Um, you can try to draw some deep personal meaning out of it. Have fun, do whatever you want. It doesn't do anything for anybody else. This, you'll you're very quickly trying to see why i am not into philosophy i i like it it's fine it's just not what i do for a living because like i man i just i want results and if you have this thing where you're like hey these people thought that the earth was flat and that you had to bury children in post holes to stop wind spirits from knocking down your buildings and whenever you were on your period you had to bring a turtle dove to the priest to atone for bleeding or whatever else is in the bible Nito bandito that's not important to me at all. It has no bearing on my reality. And like we talked about at the beginning, if there's a really outdated textbook, if I pick up an old physical anthropology textbook that talks about how different races of people have different brain sizes and therefore these people are more ape-like than human and these people, that's outdated bullshit knowledge that was debunked really early on. I don't need to sit there and pick through that to try to find the little bit of sweet corn in that turd. I can just go on to the new thing that we've actually proven with empirical evidence and just completely ditch all that yeah. old stuff. I don't see the value right. in right. any kind of spirituality yeah, like whatsoever. A, a, imagine that we we go, you know what, that concept of appeasing the gods or controlling the weather, we need to go back to that and start sacrificing stuff. In, maybe it's a different way. Maybe it was the way that we sacrifice. Like, I don't really see it. Yeah. That's a mischaracterization of my argument. So um, 
what I'm saying is that, like, uh, okay, so something applicable, something demonstrable in society, uh, the divorce rate has increased as the oh um, amount of atheism has spread, right? Like, now there's uh-huh. a lot that contributes to that. But a more traditional society tends to have, like, if people believe that if they get divorced, they're going to go to hell, they're probably not going to get divorced, right? So there yeah. is some social benefit in that fear-mongering or that uniformity, right? now. The How is that a social benefit? Getting, Are you kidding? Is Dude, come on. About getting that uniformity, okay? Dude, just add ri- like, the reductio you do on this view. Andrew, are immense. <laughs> this, this, oh my God, Andrew, riddle me this. What do you think is more responsible for the increased divorce rate? Do you think it's atheism and and getting rid of this worldview about the importance of a, a household and that you're you're not going to go to hell if you get divorced, or do you think it's that people were no longer being trapped in marriages? And that women had the right to leave a marriage and go get a career and take care of themselves. Which one of those do you think is more responsible for the divorce rate? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a that's a diff. Hello. Did we lose you? Hey, no, sorry, sorry. My phone, I guess when my screen goes black, my uh, it cuts me off. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so that's a difficult question to answer because there's like second marriages no, and not. third marriages and stuff like yeah. that, right? Yeah, so when it turns oh. out that when we gave women the right to decide who they're married to and what they're going to do with their life and their career, there were a few more divorces because women weren't being trapped in abusive relationships with no recourse and no way of getting out and no way of sustaining themselves. So yeah, we see an increased divorce rate and that's a great thing because it means that people are able to escape shitty relationships. Yeah. So like, even if we were to agree that it's a better thing for people to stay married when they don't want to be, which I don't know where you get that, that has nothing to do with like, they need to now believe oh, so in some sort of biblical either. principle. That's not what I'm saying either. There, I was, I was saying there's an incentive. There's more of an incentive. Like if, if you believe you're going to go to hell if you don't make your marriage work, you're going to try to make your marriage work. You're not going to, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm and that's that and that's evil. Yes, yes. yeah, that's it's, it's, that, it literally doesn't time. evade anything for us. Said it's forcing people to like forego their happiness or maybe their freedom because of. Mm-hmm some all, all like artificial thing that they don't know is true or not. Like that's, how is that a good thing? And I, I don't see how uh, you don't understand. So, no, no, it, it's not forego happiness. That's not what I'm saying. There's more incentive to if they can't, if they the can't be happy without leaving, if it's a situation where they can't be happy without leaving and you want to push something that forces them to go downhill, so to speak, on the well on the well being scale or something, then I, I'm not seeing the benefit in this. Like I can make something up to make you not hang up or get off the phone. Like your life is, you know, like Roland's gonna come and slaughter you or something. But like, I mean, I, why, why would I want to force? Why I don't I, force? Help me out here. I'm so confused by this. Like, by this I, just, I don't. I'm saying that that aspect of it is outdated, and it shouldn't be. But the 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 spirituality. Have you, have you ever thought, Andrew? Have you ever thought it's a good fucking reason why these things are outdated? Have you ever thought of that? That's, that's precisely where I'm going. Just like these are wonderful things that we're slowly getting rid of, and we should be getting rid of faster. And you're here, like, well, but what about the change? We can't change it. Like, yes. Yes, we can and we should. What about when people didn't have freedom? All right, should no, we, should we, should we, should should we like, I mean, where do you draw this I'm line? Saying, <laughs> so, throw out all of the trash, like, Buddy survived in the whale and, like, all of the stuff that we can prove to be garbage. No, you want to put the trash, trash back in. Work. That's what you're trying to do. We're trying to throw the garbage away and you're, you're just coming in the room and throwing the garbage around the room. 
No, I, I want to use science to pick apart the Bible and find what is true in it. Yeah, lots of people have already done that, and we found not a lot of true things, and the true things are largely inconsequential. So that's been done, and now we can move on from that, and we can just have just the true things, and we can throw out the rest of the Bible. Why do we need any other part of the Bible ever anymore, forever? Uh, who the, cares the about only you? like I think we should keep the Bible around because it's useful as a literary thing. A lot of Western literature is influenced by the Bible, and you won't understand it if you don't know a little bit about the Bible. That's a thing that we could say is useful with the Bible. Does nothing for our mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever that is, well-being. Yeah, and and can, Andrew, can before you we go, in the can, direction where I can start a search for that, um, like that that breakdown of what is let, 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 like, let me can, real quick can i ask analyzed you. in the bible because i'm actually interested in that yeah but real quick i don't want to get us off on a on a side thing I mean, please remember that question i don't want to take that away from you uh, but i i guess when you if you have uh this view on utility you agree that utility of something or appeals to emotion does not equal therefore true right like we we agree that that's a non sequitur right Absolutely. Great. Then you're talking about something that has no use to me. I don't care about the utility. I don't care about if it's appeals to emotions. That seems to just be you admitting that you're not concerned with the question of whether or not it's true. You're concerned with the question of whether or not it benefits you. I don't care about that. That's just so, un that's so uninteresting to me. That might be interesting to you. I have, I have no... Um, stock in this idea that it makes you feel good because i've never i've never had to fill those gaps with like spiritual and so i'm just so divorced from that that reality yeah. i don't know why i don't want to be pulled to somebody's level of saying like oh well these things benefit people i i honestly feel bad for these people if you seriously can't be happy with the relationships my family they give me a gift right they give me a gift meaning they give that to me it's a gift for me Right. And it's not like I asked for it. It's not like I was chose to be born. I just got it fell out of the picture. That means a lot to me because I talked to a lot of people who can't ever talk to their family anymore because they left their religion or their friends. Yep. And if that's right, if, if I can point out that there's some real notion of meaning that, that I'm having that somebody they really desperately want, but it's been kind of stripped away from them. I, I'm just really not like seeing how this is something that, is an appeal to an emotion and you just care about bolstering some kind of like psychological status, which I think is a good thing. I think we should make ourselves feel happy, but not at the expense of gullibility. Right. I mean, just yeah. go, go buy, you know, buy snake oil. And that's what you're doing right now. If, if you think that that's no, going to help. You know what? Honestly, the, like that breakdown right there, that like, I, like, like I said, I was putting on the theist mantle. I, I started this thought process as an atheist, and I got myself into a trap, and I'm like, you know what? I want to talk to these guys that are smarter than me so that they can break it fucking down. Yeah, no, like... We, we, look, I, I mean, Andrew, you'll have to think about I, a lot of all of this stuff. Mean, and like, there's, like... And, like... And when I'm looking at my notes here that I've got about, like, this whole rabbit hole that I'm that I'm that I went down, it's like, what... What is the use of it? What's what fucking benefit could come? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to swear. You're fine. What You're good. You're okay. It? We're past the first few minutes, man. So we're we're in the clear. <laughs> okay. We're but we're yeah, well past the first. <laughs> minutes, <number one. laughs> Yeah, we've got we've got to wrap everything up, Andrew. Uh, we've got like, a ton of other callers, and I think we only have time. We don't even have time for one more. We're gonna do one more, but like we've, yeah, we can, we've, we can we've do, got to wrap the show. Do one more. But if, hey, yeah, Andrew, but, no, sorry, I took so much of you guys' time, but I appreciate you helping. Me fine. No, this is thought process. You guys are awesome. Well, I, let me let me stress that if you because I I expect that you'll still have some maybe doubts to get off the comment. Did what he say makes sense? That'll that'll occur. I and it should it should naturally occur. Do not fucking listen to me and Forrest and say that that is necessarily the case. Do your own independent research. Think for yourself oh, yeah. and make yourself somebody that develops critical thinking skills where you're not going to be conned by NFTs and all this scammy crap that you can find. Oh, this isn't this whole thing isn't just about, um, you know, the religious stuff and the utility. The reason why the truth matters is you protect yourself. 
you protect yourself from a bunch of people that want to take advantage of your goal ability and some yep. fragile state that you might be in. Hence, a lot of people in the self-help realm, right? Self-help gurus. Yep. And they make all the rest of them look bad who are generally trying to help people. And so I just yep. look for yourself. Do not just take anyone's words. Build your standards to a point. Uh, I think you'll you'll get to a point where it'll coincide. For me, it got to a point where it just, oh, this is like what they do in science. <laughs> I feel happier. I feel less gullible and dumb and stupid, but not saying that you are or anything, but that was my, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, like I said, I got myself down this rabbit hole, man. And I, I, I started using faulty reasoning that I couldn't see. And like I said, the whole reason that I wanted to come in absolutely like on that side of the argument was so that you guys could really pick it apart. And I, like, I want to, I try to play devil's advocate and view all sides as best you I can. And you should like, I, I really appreciate your guys' time on this one. Cause that, that, that was exactly what I needed. I think, I think your intentions are all in the right, right area, man. I appreciate it. Yep. Happy to be a service, man. You thanks guys have for a calling great in. night. You too. You take too. care. Awesome one. And thanks for chatting. Of course. Hey, it's our pleasure. Thank you for being here.